He's in class that everybody uh, around the campus can take a selective study. And what I noted in, in their portfolios when they handed in, even though it's a physical education class and it's a very highly psychomotor oriented um, class, but what I realized in the portfolios that they handed was this, this talk about environment quite a bit. So I wanted to investigate that in, in a little further. And it's an ongoing uh, thing I do in the various classes that I teach. It's important to do actual research in your own class because that can inform your practice and the outcomes that you expect in the, in the classroom also. It's an important thing to do besides other research that you do. And, and so I thought environmental awareness might be something that was uh, investigating. So I'd like to define, um, um, it's not my area of research, but I had to read around what environmental awareness and it's being conscious of the world around you and it includes three dimensions of environmental knowledge, environmental attitudes and environmental action. Environmental knowledge involves the individual and the environment and um, their linkage into ecological issues and problems. Environmental attitudes um, is a tendency to react positively or, or negatively to certain situation, event, person or the object. Environmental action has three fields, personal environmental action, information seeking behavior, or environmental activities. And that's the framework I'll use to talk about what I found uh, a little later on. But I want to talk uh, and say that the, the outdoors is a laboratory for innovation and learning. It's a, it provides a laboratory of, of experiences that enables one to acquire skills uh, in which to enjoy a lifetime of creative living. And, and gives insight and concepts into the natural world. Um, and obviously because I take them outdoors, usually it's for outdoor education, for physical activity, for moving, for movement, for motor activities. But eventually they would have intense environmental encounters inevitably as I take them outdoors. Uh, because it's important to do so to develop and nourish a relationship with the earth by spending time outdoors. And, and of course, it's not going to happen through the news television or the environmental programs or on the textbook or online. But that won't, it will educate them to a certain degree, but it won't transform them. Um, because by spending more time outdoors and getting to know the earth, that's how um, you get to learn um, th th things outdoors and learn things about society and and learn things about the environment. So there needs to be a pedagogy of responsibility in higher education. One that engages teachers and engaged in a commitment to engage the questions of diversity, democracy and sustainability in ways that are designed to bring about change in the ways that human beings live, interact with and use the environment of the planet. Because it's important to increasingly reconnect the children to the natural world, world through innovative programs and gain first-hand experience, and as, and, and as a result, encourage personal and meaningful relationship with nature. In ED184, I have uh, usually a class of 40 to 50, and I take them out on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We do a lot of things outdoors, rope courses, we swings, zip, hiking games, and lots more activities. I'll talk very quickly about what my findings are for this particular study. The one that I saw you previously was in, uh, published in the National Journal of Learning. This will eventually get into a paper that hopefully will be submitted for, and hopefully for our publication later on. But I'll talk very quickly some very uh, emerging findings, and then I'll show you some pictures of what my classes have, were doing. All right, in terms of environmental knowledge, students recognize the outdoors is a venue for learning. Lots of things go unnoticed unless you interact with the outdoors. That the students learn that protecting and conserving the environment is important, that keeping the environment, looking after it is important, being stewards to the environment, that nature is a viable venue for relaxation and exercise, and you learn a lot about the history of your, um, your environment as you go outdoors eventually, even though I might my main aim is to exercise them and to, for them to appreciate the outdoors. Eventually they get to learn other things. And the last year I talked about the effective domain of learning um, in this the same class, in which, and I said before, it's much more psychomotor in nature, physical education, but you get to learn other things, or, or folklore that the sand dunes were formed because two giants accidentally dropped a, a basket inch of sand. For example, it's a nice story, isn't it? or they get to learn um, little names of 
flores and fauna and their interconnectedness with the surroundings. In terms of environmental attitudes, there is increasing respect for the environment from the portfolios that are read and analyzed. There is a lot of talk about the aesthetics of, of nature, that the waves and the breeze and the trees and the sand were described as beautiful, magnificent, awesome, and amazing, and aesthetic, the beauty of nature. And, and of course, a lot of students encounter certain things in the environment for the first time, and that's important. Besides individual appreciation, there is obviously group realization of a lot of things because they were put into groups to work as a collective um, group in, in the outdoors and gives you a scenic peace and serenity as you go out and experience uh, the outdoors. And finally, in the environmental action, it forms a renewed catalyst for many of the students to be increasing in the indoors and, and, and the experiences that would bring will be brought about. That's Gail, Sarah, and Tassi, who are harnessed up, ready to go up on the ropes. That's Ankita in front with her group. And often, I don't tell them to get into uniforms like that, but they make their own tea sets in their groups before they go for outdoors. They make their nice little tea sets. They call themselves the lions here, for example. That's Ankita in front. They're going to go on the zip that takes them from one end of the forest to the other end. And you can see here, kids, they, it looks easy, but it's not. It's scary. A lot of them have to be brought down again. <laughs> but because they have to go around the ropes, touch from here, they go around here, go come back. It's a long area where they go up in the air. So they, it's, a, it's a risky. That's why they have to put the things up there, but it's managed risk. So they have to go around ropes up there and come back again. So they do rope courses over there. That's Joseph going the zip from one end of the forest and goes to the other end. That's mortar up. They have to climb up a pole and try and jump and touch the orange ball at the top there. Only two boys in the class of 40 managed to do that. But they did try anyway. But trying to get up there is a huge task for a lot of students. I could see the confidence and the and they challenge themselves further. And that's what I like. They try to try and see them push them a little further. And some of them would reach here and go and right the end of the pole and find out how just to stand up and they'll get wobbly and shaky. Some of them have to be brought up and then when they regain their confidence, then they go up again and so forth. So it doesn't, it looks easy on the picture, but it doesn't. And that's Tevita from the platform. You stay from the platform, you get to swing up right to the canopy and you go back again, you right to the end. And that's the most scary part. And that's, the time that I hear lots of swearing from the kids. <laughs> Particularly the one that was purposely pushed by the, the person at the top there because the head of was waiting there the whole time. She was accidentally uh, purposely pushed. And then you can hear as many swearers I've heard of for a long time. Uh, that's Par and Emily taking a walk around the track, all around the forest. So obviously they have to encounter, so that's why it comes into the portfolios that they do talk about uh, that. Oh, that's just a zip, there's somebody uh, out there. He'll end up, or she will end up on the other side of the forest. And that's uh, Christine and Salotti climbing a double deal. It looks easy there, but it starts from somewhere down here. You go up, only few, they, these two girls are able to reach the top one. But it's a bit difficult, a number of them to come down from here. They start from here. So it's, it challenges the kids a little further. And that's a students walking. That's in the sand dunes. On the beach, exercising, or doing circuits, or cultural dances and interchanges. And of course they go through forests and see uh, nice pristine streams. So they have to, uh, or they work in a group that's purposely mixed, the students of Fiji, Kiribati, and Tuvalu here, having breakfast in a group. Thanks indeed for listening.